Cavers may go into caves for a variety of reasons, including recreation, restoration, photography, scientific study, or simply social bonding. But the thing that drives most cavers is a desire to explore the unknown. The discovery and exploration of cave passages that have never been seen before, for many, is the ultimate caving experience. It's the equivalent of skiing untracked powder, getting the first ascent of an unclimbed peak, or logging the first descent of an uncharted river. It's an increasingly rare and special experience. There are a number of strategies used by cavers to make discoveries of virgin cave passage. These include ridge walking to find new entrances and digging to open up new entrances or new passages in existing caves. For others, a strategy for finding new cave passage is to check previously known caves using the technique of cave survey. Surveying of caves is the process used to collect the data needed to generate a map. If the data is collected following modern survey standards, the resulting maps can be extremely accurate. Detailed and accurate maps can be used to better understand the geology and hydrology of a cave and can also be used by other scientists or land managers. Recreational cavers often use maps to route find and navigate to specific areas of interest. For surveyors, a draft or working cave map identifies areas that have not yet been explored. Working maps show continuing passages or branches that lead to the unknown. Methodical and systematic exploration and mapping of these leads is one of the most efficient and effective ways to discover new cave passage. On a typical survey trip, there are several tasks or roles, and it typically requires a team of two to four cavers to perform all these roles. The most common survey team will consist of three cavers. One team role is the instrument person. They collect foresight survey measurements. They also help the point person in determining potential next survey stations and they may provide left, right, up and down distance measurements to the sketcher. The point person establishes and labels the survey stations and takes back site measurements. They also determine the route to be taken and communicate potential leads to the sketcher. The sketcher records four and back site measurements in the book, draws a scaled line plot of the survey, and sketches the details of the passage around that line plot. If the survey team is made up of only two people, then the sketcher will generally also do all the tasks normally performed by the foresight instrument person. If there are four or more team members, then other tasks can be delegated as needed. These might include a second sketcher to collect profiles or cross-sections, a person to collect inventory, a photographer, a person to focus on rigging and caves with a lot of vertical work, or in some cases a scout to help determine the best route for the survey and identify good locations for the next several survey stations. If there are five or more team members, then it is usually more effective to split into two teams, assuming there are two sketchers and two sets of survey gear. A detailed explanation of each survey team role will be covered in separate videos. To survey a cave, the process generally starts either at the cave entrance or a previously established survey station. Each new survey shot must be in direct line of sight from the previous survey station. For efficiency, survey stations are often set to maximize the length of the shot in order to cover as much cave passage as possible with the minimum number of stations. In some cases, as in particularly large rooms or long passages, intermediate stations may be used to help improve the accuracy of the sketch. The point person will set a station where the previous station can be seen and where the next shot can be made efficiently while trying to minimize impact to the cave and minimize safety concerns. Stations are also set to make the collection of data more convenient and comfortable. The critical survey measurements that are collected include the distance between the stations, the azimuth or compass angle between the stations, and the inclination or vertical angle between the stations. From these three measurements, it is possible to convert the data into Cartesian coordinates so that the X, Y, and Z locations of every station can be known relative to any other station. The coordinates can then be plotted in the east-west north-south, and vertical axes. In addition to these critical measurements, it is common to record the approximate distance to the left and right walls, as well as the ceiling and floor relative to the survey station. These measurements are used as a guideline for drawing the sketch, but can also be used by cave survey software to draw approximated 3D models of the cave and estimate things like the volume of the surveyed cave passages. Key pieces of survey gear include the instruments for collecting distance, azimuth, and inclination data, a system for marking stations, and a book or digital device for recording data and sketches. There are variations on the type of gear used with many newer tools becoming available that help automate and digitize the process. Survey trips typically last longer than the average recreational trip due to the length of time required to collect the needed data. It is common that survey trips include an initial high-intensity period of caving during travel to the survey destination, 
Most survey trips try to maximize the number of survey shots and data collected, so travel is often fast with little time allocated for sightseeing. The survey itself is much slower paced in terms of the distance traveled, and then the trip back out of the cave is fast paced again. Because of this variation in pace, it is best to dress lightly for the travel to and from the objective, but bring extra insulation layers for the survey itself. Because of the length of these trips, it is also a good idea to bring extra batteries, food, and water. Cave survey is a fun and rewarding way to experience caves. It is possibly the best way to make new discoveries, and you get the satisfaction of seeing your work contribute to a more accurate and complete finished map. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. Subscribe if you aren't already, so you can learn about other videos on the subject of caving, and comment below to let me know how I'm doing or to suggest other caving-related topics.